Hey everybody, welcome. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the n factorial classification of algorithms. These are like the worst in terms of complexity because they are extremely computationally expensive. So we're going to go through some explanations of why that's the case, and then we're going to go through some concrete examples. So this video should be pretty fun, I'm excited. We're gonna to touch on permutations and the traveling salesman problem, which is pretty huge in computer science programs and all kinds of other stuff. So stay tuned. First, I wanna just talk about factorial, how it works, and why it's a problem when it comes to algorithms. So if we have an algorithm that is said to be n factorial, what does that mean? Well, the n is the input size. So imagine an array of three elements. We might have three factorial as its complexity. What does that mean? Well, three times two times one, which the one, I don't even think it matters, but this is going to end up being six. Not so bad. Six computations. Now, what if we just increase the input size by one and we say four factorial? Well, this is going to be four times three times two times one, which is 24. So by increasing the input size just one, the number of computations goes up a lot. Let's try it one more time. Let's go with five factorial. This is going to be five times four times three times two times one, which is actually 120. So you can see this is just going up and up and up. And you can imagine with just an input size of let's say 100, well that's going to be 100 times 99 times 98 all the way down to one, which I don't even know what that number is, but it's humongous, so we're not even gonna try to figure it out. So you can see that with just a few increases in the input size, the number becomes unbearable. So there is actually limitations when it comes to n factorial algorithms where we don't have enough computing power to get the answer. So there's different things that people do to maybe get a pretty close estimate to the answer, and we're gonna talk about some of that soon. But for now, I wanna go through some concrete examples of what kind of algorithms would have an n factorial classification. So the first example is calculating all of the permutations for some input. So we're gonna talk about what a permutation is and how to do it. So here's what the example is. So let's say I give you three letters. I want you to give me all possible arrangements of these letters and you can't have any repeats and you can't leave any out. So you can't have AAA and you can't just have A by itself. Well, all of these different arrangements are known as permutations. So, I'm gonna write that out for you guys, permutations. And we're just going to go through this because it shouldn't take that much time. So we could have ABC, but we could also have ACB. We could have BAC, BCA. We could have CAB and CBA. So those are all the possible different arrangements without any repeats and without leaving anything out. This totals six possibilities. And these possibilities are known as permutations. So going back to the factorial thing, the input size is three. There's just three elements. But this is a factorial process, so we get three factorial, which is six. If we added one more letter in here, there would actually be 24 different arrangements. So that is a very simple example of where a factorial would come in. If you wanna calculate all of the permutations for some string or some array, you should expect however many elements there are, it to take you factorial operations. And that can add up very, very quickly. The next example I wanted to give you was the traveling salesman problem. And this is a very interesting problem, and it helps just to understand the backstory before you start calculating junk. So imagine a guy 
who wants to visit every single city available to him, but he wants to do this in the best way possible. What way is the best? We'll just say the shortest. You know, he doesn't want to travel all the way over here and then back over here and then all the way over here. He wants to get the optimized path so he can hit every single city, get back to where he started, and use as little gas as possible. So how would we even consider this problem? Well, the very first thing is you start somewhere. You have a starting position and you have to visit every single city. And another rule of this is that all of the cities are interconnected. We can represent this on a chalkboard with what's known as a graph. So imagine each city to be a circle and these cities are connected. So each one of these circles or nodes is known as a vertex when we're talking about graph theory and proper terminology. And the lines connecting them are known as edges. So if you want to be technically correct, these are the vertices and all of these lines are the edges. And you can think of each one of these vertices as a city. So we'll just name them A, B, C, and D. But that's not all. We also have distances between them. So you can basically put a cost for each one of these paths. And they're not going to be to scale. That's because it can get a little funky trying to represent that. And we're only using four nodes or, or four vertices here. But imagine doing this with like six or seven. It's going to get pretty crazy. So let's just say we throw some numbers in here. And these are the distances between these cities. Notice now that every single city is connected. So you can go from A to D and you can get to every single city. All right, so here's the challenge. Let's say you start at city A and I want you to visit every single city and get back to A, but I want you to do it with the shortest path possible. You tell me what the answer is. Well, you might be able to look through here and think through it and figure it out, but that's just because we have four nodes. Imagine if we had 20 nodes. There's just too many possibilities. So with this example, we have four cities. So consider that to be our input. N is four. Now this one is a little bit different than the previous example with the permutations because we don't actually have N factorial permutations. We have N minus one factorial permutations. So it's going to look like this. N minus one, all factorial. So in the case of n being four, it's going to be three factorial or six different paths. Now there's another thing here. For every path, let's say we go in a circle here. We start at A, we go to B, we go to C, we go to D, and then we go back to A. Well, we could go that exact same path, but in the opposite direction, and it's gonna cost exactly the same. That's because you can go down these paths either way and it just has a cost for it. There are variations of graphs where going one direction might cost more than the other, but that's not the case in this scenario. So we actually really only have three paths. That's because the other three are just the same path in the opposite order. So the end final result is not going to be n minus one factorial. It's actually going to be n minus one factorial all divided by two. This is still inside of the n factorial classification of algorithms. It's just going to be a little bit smaller than the previous example. If instead we decided to broaden the rules a little bit and just said you could start at any of these nodes as long as you got back to where you started and the directions might be different. So you might have a path on here that cost three one direction and six the other. In that situation, it's just going to be n factorial. But because we have some rules on this, that's where we get the minus one and the divided by two. So keep that in mind. So let's go through all of the different possibilities, starting at A. Well, we could go A to B, and then B to C, C to D, and then D back to A. That's the first example. We're just going to leave out the same path going in the opposite direction. So that was the first path, just going in a counterclockwise circle, essentially. But now instead of going from B to C, I want to go to D. So it's going to look like this. We start at A and go to B. Then we go from B to D, then from D to C. 
and then C back to A. That is the next path we could do. A third path would be starting at A, going to C, to B, to D, to A. So I'll write that out. A to C, C to B, B to D, and then D to A. This is actually every single path possibility. You could try to think of any others, but it's going to be a repeat of what we just had, or it's going to break one of the rules. So let's just go through an example. If we had A to D, and then D to B, and then B to C, and then C to A, well this is actually just a repeat of what we had, just in a different order. And you can see that here. A, D, D, B, B, C, C, A. <laughs> it's kind of hard to show you guys that there. So this is just a repeat. And this does add up with our calculation earlier because we basically had four minus one factorial all divided by two. Evaluating the top, we would have three factorial divided by two. This is six divided by two, which is three. But we're not quite done. We figured out the permutations, but we haven't taken a look at the actual time to travel to the cities to figure out which path is best. So now let's figure out which path is best. And to do that, we just take a look at each step. A to B is six. B to C is seven, so six plus seven. C to D is two. And then D to A is 10. This should add up to 25, I think. <laughs> now let's try again. A to B is six. B to D is, um, kind of messed up on my labeling here. Let's say this one was there. So B to D is three. And then D to C is two. And then C to A is two. Ooh, that looks pretty good. This looks like nine. 10, 11, 12, 13. Mm, nice. All right, let's try this last one here. A to C, that's two. C to B is seven, mm, not so great. B to D is three. And then D to A is 10. Mm, not so great there. So this one's going to be 22. So then we know that for the salesman to optimize his trip, he should take this path. So he should go A to B, B to D, D to C, and then C to A. And he stopped where he